Hello, my name is David Rowan. I'm uh, a master practitioner and trainer of modern applied psychology, which is uh, an umbrella term for uh, NLP, hypnotherapy and psychobiology, three different fields that uh, actually work very well together. And uh, a, a, the premise behind uh, all of these is the application of language and its relationship to our experience of reality. And when we say language ordinarily uh, in neurological terms, we mean all kinds of language, from voice tones, body postures, and the words we say. Our tones of voice, um, looks, gestures, right? Language. Now, a, a part of language, obviously, is words. And this little video is just a, a few words about a word or rather uh, a combined word. Now, before we begin, I just want you to, to have a go a little experiment, all right? In a moment, I'm gonna give you an instruction and uh, just give it a go, see what happens, all right? Now, what I'd like you to do while you're looking at the screen at the moment is this. I want you to close your eyes without closing them. Close your eyes without closing them. And do that now. That's right. Close your eyes without closing them. Without closing them. Close your eyes without closing them. Try really hard. Close your eyes without closing them. Just close your eyes without closing them. Close your eyes without closing them. Okay, stop. Now, <clears throat> there might be some of you that closed your eyes, and there might be some of you where your eyes stayed open, where you went into kind of a glazed look. And it was all a bit confusing, the world of it. And the reason for that is, <clears throat> you know, I gave you an instruction. Um, I told you to close your eyes. Ah, but then you see there was that counter instruction, wasn't there? I told you to close your eyes without closing them. And what happened was, nothing happened. Now, you might remember in maths that plus and minus cancelled each other out. <clears throat> and what I did, I told you to do something not. I connected them together in a sentence. Do something not. Now, that's like the equivalent of saying, don't think of a big blue dog with yellow stripes. And what did you just do? Think of a big blue dog with yellow stripes. Well, why did you do that? Well, if the plus and minus cancel each other out, when I say words, it vibrates a speaker, which goes into electric current, vibrates a diaphragm at the other end, vibrates the air, touches your eardrum, and in your brain it says sound coming in, sound coming in, and it has to configure a meaning. So when your brain hears the first word, don't, it says all, oh, do and not, throw those away. What else is there? Think of, think what? A big, a big blue. Find a shade of blue, find a shade of blue. Dog. Identify the type of dog with yellow spots, stars, stripes. Do, do, do. Puts the stripes on, and then it knows what to not think of and takes it away. Which meant that just for a second there, it thought of it. Now, uh, this can be thought of as an, a negated instruction, right? So you tell someone to do something unwittingly because there's negation at the front of it. So um, instead of don't think of a big blue dog with yellow stripes, kitty on a climbing frame. Mum looks up and says, don't look down, you'll fall. Don't look down, you'll fall. Kitty goes, all right, ah, and does just that. Oh, no, you know? What you mean, when we say don't blah, 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 it's actually an instruction to go ahead and blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. Don't you talk to me like that. Don't let me down. Oh, no, not don't let me down. Oh, don't break my heart. Oh, no. An don't you ever go off with another woman. Oh, what are you, what are you, why are you instructing him to do that? Now, you can have a chat, right? who's very, very good at um, presentations. The company is on a knife edge. They're about to go down the hill. Everybody's mortgages and things are on the line. The company must survive. There's one chance left. There's a, a, a contract. And if the company can get this contract, we're all saved. So they pick the guy who's best at presenting. And the guy who's best at presenting also is very good at planning, which is why they picked him, because he's meticulous, right? Now, he's got one single thought one trajectory in his brain. Success. He's going to do this and it's going to be great. He's got a plan. He's got it all worked out. He's, the pathway to success 
it's there, right? But his boss, at the end of the day, is very helpful. Uh, doesn't really understand that language affects the central nervous system of the recipient. He just thinks that words are convenient ways of trying to convey a meaning. But the impact of a word, I love you, or I don't love you anymore, they clamped your car. We have these emotional reactions. You can try it in an office. Uh, just say the word redundancy a little bit too loud in the conversation. And like ripples on a pond, heartbeats will go bup, 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 bup. <laughs> makes you this anxiety go around the room. So, because we have a physical response to all language. Now, um, if this manager, being helpful, didn't really understand that the word don't is negated out by the person's unconscious, so although the conscious mind can intellectually appreciate something that isn't there, can analyse something that doesn't exist, your unconscious, your central nervous system, can only respond to what's present. So it's a little bit like thinking that your conscious mind has forward and reverse gears, but your unconscious only has forwards, doesn't have any backwards, it's not there. Right? So, saying, um, now, if the boss said, now, don't be late, ah. the meticulous planner who's been chosen because of his wonderful skills at meticulous planning, hears the words, don't be late. And then his brain has to give that a meaning. What does be late mean? So in order to understand what the phrase be late means, he has to imagine, even just for a second, what being late is. How would he feel if he was late? What would his heartbeat be like if he was late? How did he come to be late? And because he's really good at planning, if his brain, as quick as a flash, can work out the pathway from being late back to the present where he is, now he has two plans. He had the original intention to arrive on time, and now he's got the pathway to being late. And there's a 50-50 gamble on which one he's going to do. Before the boss was trying to be helpful with the word don't, there was only one possible outcome, success. But he's opened the door of failure as well. Oh dear. What happens if you get a generation of children? And remember that their imaginative brains have to construct the meanings of the words that they hear in order to comprehend them. So if you say, don't take drugs, don't take drugs, don't take drugs. How is the person listening to that supposed to understand the meaning of the sentence without imagining, even just for a moment, what the action would be like to do? And now, of course, they're inspired. A part of their brain has gone down a road that it might not have gone down before. If we're lucky, their feet won't follow that trail. But if we're unlucky, we just a little bit appear, pressure pushing from the back. Hmm. Be careful. Now, some of my students say to me, so how do you get around this? You know, how do you say don't be late? Um, well, be polite. When you go to a bar, 10.30 on a Friday night, six people deep at the bar, right? You don't say to the barman, now, I don't want a whiskey in American, I don't want half a lager, I don't want lager and lime, I don't want uh, a Bacardi Visa, right? And go through every possible combination of drinks that you don't want, leaving the one that you do want right at the end. Because you get ignored very quickly, and a lot of people might get annoyed as well. No, with bar staff, we're very polite. We give instructions in short, concise sentences, and we say what we want to happen. Right. So just speak to the rest of the world as politely as you'd speak to a barman. Tell people what you want to happen. Say, please arrive on time. Instead of saying, don't touch that, it's hot. Don't touch that, it's hot. Don't touch that, it's hot. Instructing the child to do that. Do the opposite. Say, please stand here and stay safe. Tell them what to do rather than go through lists and lists of what to avoid. And you'll find that people will cooperate more easily and more readily. So when you said to that person, uh, don't phone me after six, and so they phone you after six, and you think, why is this awkward person phoning me after six? But I told him not to, right? Well, the thing is that you didn't tell him not to. You actually told him, ring after six. Don't ring after six. Encourages them to think that way. So it does mean, of course, that you have to speak in a forwards direction. Ah, and we have to be responsible and careful with how we convey things to people. Because sometimes it might be that people are deliberately awkward. Sometimes it might be that they're responding appropriately to our awkward communication. So if the communicator takes responsibility 
we can adjust it. You see, if the world is the problem, if it's the people out there that respond in an awkward way, if it's your relatives or whoever it is, then, well, there's nothing you can do about that. You know, you just got to hope that whoever's around you is having a good day so that you can have a nice day too. But if you take responsibility for owning the response, so if you take it that it's not so much that Jeff is awkward or Henrietta is cranky, maybe there's something about how you convey things that prompted them to have that response. Because at least if you explore your own communication skills, then that gives you the chance of adjusting it. And if you make a slight adjustment in how you communicate, that just might have a rippling effect on how people respond. Hmm. And if we can communicate more favourably with people, then the world might respond more favourably to us. So things just become clear. And uh, if there's a little bit more ease in the world and a little bit more clarity in life, then that's just a, an element that can, you know, perhaps grow and make things easier. You know, not just in your world, but rippling outside and beyond that as well. So, some words about a word. Now, don't remember to do this, all right? And don't watch this too often, because it's important that you don't have too much fun. And enjoy listening to how people communicate. Or, by the way, you will find that um, you'll be in supermarket queues or on a bus or somewhere public, and you'll hear people near you, because they don't know about this, saying, yeah, well, you know, I said to him, I said, no, don't you do that to me, don't you come round, and he came round, and I said, I, to I told him not to come round, I said, no, don't you go and pick, don't you pick that up, and, fret and he went and did it, I said, oh, and you'll hear this all the time, you, no, oh. and you'll you hear two people talking with a friend who's upset, saying, you know, don't worry, but don't phone him, you know, don't phone him, It'll, it, you know, just, just get it, get over it, and they'll give this kind of advice, peppered <laughs> with these negated commands to go ahead and do the thing which is the opposite of what they're advising the friend to do and you know that the person's kind of being guided into going into a difficult situation have it you can't kind of suddenly go excuse me stop uh language man is here now let's just rephrase that so it's easy for you to do um we're not allowed to do that that's called interfering um but at least you know i thought that uh, if i make a video like this it might um you know, kind of share some information which could be useful and then maybe you could share the shared information which might be useful to some more people. Um, yes, so uh, have, have a bit of fun with it, I would. Um, and just listen out, you know, it's uh, interesting. Um, on training courses, it does get a bit kind of, you know, people say, don't pass the soap. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, you'll find even if you're aware of these things, a person's unconscious still tends to respond and it's quite fun uh, just watching it. If you want to know any more about uh, modern applied psychology and uh, language and things, and maybe even uh, some of the uh, uh, things that this stuff can be used to help with in a therapeutic way, because there is a very serious side to all of this. You know, um, if you're dealing with a person who's addicted to drugs um, or recovering from, you know, uh, trauma um, uh, or just very, very, very anxious about an exam that's looming or something like that, um, then showing the person how to be, have a, an easier relationship with those kind of things and maybe even uh, resolve some of the root issues uh, that's, you know, that's behind it all um, can be very, very beneficial. You know? So um, this is just a little example of a tiny, tiny, small piece of this uh, vast toolbox of modern applied psychology that we use. Um, but I thought it might be uh, useful and uh, give you a bit of a giggle at the same time. All right. OK, so... Uh, Yes, uh, if you want to write, info at davidryan.co.uk or have a look at the website, www.davidryan.co.uk. I look forward to hearing from you. All right, take care and uh, uh, don't watch it immediately. Give it a bit of time before you do it. All right, thank you very much indeed. See you later. Bye.